Hey, how you doing? Austin here. In this video, we're going to be talking about Xpeng. This is one of my favorite uh, Chinese EV stocks, one of the, well, really a global EV player. Um, and I want to chat with you about them. And I really want to come at today's video from the standpoint of should you buy Xpeng stock? Okay, so if you're either A, considering just getting into it, you're brand new, you haven't decided yet, I'm going to cover that. Um, if you already own the stock and maybe looking to add to your position, we'll chat about that as well as um, I'll give you a price um, prediction as well uh, here in a few minutes. So we're going to cover that as well. We're going to cover a few things today. So uh, stick around. Hopefully you'll uh, enjoy the content for you. You guys know that I'm a very bullish EV uh, stock investor. I own Tesla. I own NEO. I do own Xpeng. Uh, I own CCIV as well. And um, and yeah, I'm overall very, very bullish on the sector. I think the sector has a tremendous amount of growth in front of it. In fact, the more and more research I do, and we'll even have some of those research numbers in, in, today's, uh, in today's content, we'll talk about really how big the global uh, EV marketplace is going to be. So we're going to cover a lot of ground today in this video. So uh, number one, uh, this video is for entertainment purposes only. And secondly, if you haven't already done so, consider subscribing and drop a like if you would. Dropping a like really actually genuinely helps the video. So if you get any type of value out of that, would you please just smash that like button? I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, so let's talk about Xpeng. Xpeng is uh, currently up and trading just a little bit. It's currently trading at $31.80 at the time of this recording. And we've had a little bit of a flat, but maybe run up a little bit. We're gonna go look at their stock chart here in just a minute. But overall, I think that Xpeng stock is a $60 stock inside of 12 months, uh, approximately in there. And we're actually going to go here in a minute and look at see if uh, uh, on tip rank, see if they believe if they agree with me, if we're on the same page. Uh, sometimes the analysts and I definitely do not agree, and uh, there's definitely companies that we uh, we disagree on. But we'll we'll cover that as well. So uh, let's get started and let's go take a look at what's going on with Xpeng. So as you can see, as I mentioned, uh, we're currently trading at 31.87. Actually, just went up about seven cents, so we're up a little bit under one uh, percent today. Uh, overall, looking like a decent day. Oh, by the way, just in case you didn't know this, Xpeng is set to re, re uh, to report first quarter results on Thursday, May 13th. So we got a big earnings week next week coming. Uh, so that's what's going on there. If we look at a six month chart with Xpeng, we've basically got kind of a what I would really consider a flat uh, horizontal, uh, you know, line going, and we're kind of we're, we're basically kind of stuck at this position. We've definitely established that thirty dollars, although we did dip here. Uh, you know, that kind of high twenties, low thirty is our is our is our support line, and I don't really think we're going to go below that. We've got to get above thirty five to really kind of break out and go to the next level. Uh, that's really kind of in my mind the next major. Uh, obstacle to get through is that's our that's our resistance level is thirty five dollars so that's where I'm kind of you know looking at at, at it going um, where it needs to go rather so you can see that we're up a little bit today I always like to do this I always like to add in Neo and say Tesla at, on top of the chart to show you a very simple thing and that is the fact that look at how these stocks all what I call shadow. They all shadow each other. So they're all kind of running right there together. Uh, you can see that NEO is is a little, is, is coming up a little bit more of, of an uptick, but you can see they're all trending down just a little bit as of late in the last day or so. Um, I mentioned earlier that it was up. I, I apologize. That was, I misspoke. Um, you know, but they're, well, we are up just, a, I mean, a, a little bit, right? Uh, and you can see like even there, like even today, uh, they're all bouncing just a little bit. See how they're all bouncing up just a, just a smidge. Use that in a, use that. That's, that's my word. Uh, use that in a sentence today. Uh, you'll freak somebody out. <laughs> okay, you can see that. So I just want to show you that and overall, you know, I think here's, here's what I want you to walk away from. Our support level we're at, I don't really expect it to drop down. 35 is our next major level we've got to get through. I think this is a $60 stock inside of 12 months. As long as we continue to get kind of things rolling with us, the Nasdaq you can see is flat today. Dow's down 135. Uh, we've just got to get kind of overall money coming back into the EV sector, which is coming back. Money's coming, starting to come back into the top uh, growth stocks. Uh, there's discussion on whether or not Kathy Wood and Ark are going to pick up Neo and Xpeng. I think X and, and by the way, Xpeng was part of that discussion, right? She's, she's thinking about adding them. Um, you know, obviously she already owns Tesla and her 
funds over Tesla, et cetera. Okay, so let's move on. Should you buy XPeng stock? Okay, that's really the, 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 the core of what we're gonna talk about. So XPeng has invested significantly in technology becoming being competitive advantage. This is this is where XPeng and Neo, Neo being their other biggest competitor in the Chinese EV space, where they differ. Okay, and don't, don't misunderstand. Neo's invested in technology as well, but but XPeng has fundamentally gone and invested in in the technology, more of the technology aspect, their software, uh, you know, a, a bunch of different tech tech related things way more heavily than, than their competitors, okay? So they're going that route. They're going that technology, the software route, all that kind of stuff. Neo is going more of the lifestyle brand route. Kind of, I don't know, I've talked about this in previous Neo videos. Neo is going more into the kind of the, they want to be the Apple of cars, so to speak, right? They want it to be a lifestyle choice and things like that, okay? So XPeng's valuation is cheaper than Neo or Tesla, therefore being a good long-term player in the secular growth. Okay, that's your, that's the answer to your question. Should you buy it? Yes, it is a long-term growth. If you do buy it, again, do your own due diligence. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, it is a good investment right now uh, because of the major growth in the EV market, especially China. That's where they're mainly at. They've just moved into Norway a little bit, uh, and but they're mainly, obviously, mainly in China. Okay. Uh, they are absolutely, again, they, are, they have a cheaper valuation, but they are absolutely investing in technology. They really view Tesla as their competition and, their view, and they're kind of taking the Tesla approach from an investment and technology standpoint, okay? Uh, they have a market cap of six, uh, 26 billion. So if you've already covered some of this, some of this you, you already kind of know, uh, stick around, there may be a little golden nugget here or there, okay? So they have a market cap of 26 billion. They currently have two models, an SUV, the G3, and a four-door sedan, four -door sedan the P7. Uh, and they've recently introduced their third model, the P5, that they expect to start deliveries in coming months. A fourth model, an SUV, is expected in 2022. So they are rapidly rolling out uh, cars uh, and, and SUVs, okay? Okay, so this is where they kind of do differ from NEO. Okay, they've gone after the middle to high end market, having therefore a slightly different approach than its closest competitors, NEO and Tesla, that are more focused on the luxury market. Okay, so they're going after kind of the middle to high end. They're really going after the meat of the market, that kind of middle market, um, you know, mid. Uh, mid-market buyer, things of that nature. So just if you didn't know that, now you do. They have an omni-channel distribution model, which means they sell direct uh, online through physical stores. And they've invested heavily in autonomous driving. They're, they're the ones that have come out and they, they're starting to put LiDAR uh, in their cars, things of that nature. So they're, again, they're taking that high-end kind of tech route and they're coupling that with the fact that they're going after kind of the mid to high-end market, okay? All right. So again, they this is they've invested. Um, the the uh, let's see. Oh, oh yeah, this is interesting. One reason why more than forty percent of their workforce works on R and D, uh, a much higher weight compared to other other automakers. Forty percent of Xpeng's workforce works on R and D. That's that's very impressive. And I think that that is going to pay off dividends, guys, in the long run, in two, three, five years. They when they when they will start to to really massively their technology will start to become a major, major competitive differentiator uh, as they move along. Okay. If you want to pause, this is talking about their kind of their manufacturing capabilities. If you want to pause and just read that, you're more than welcome. I'll leave it there for a minute. Okay. So uh, they've delivered around 13,000 units in 2019, 20,000 units in 2020. At this stage, um, the, this is a confirmation that the company's technology and the quality of the cars, which is good, very important for a company that is entering a very competitive industry. And they're a relatively new company. They started up in, I believe, 2015. So they're very, very uh, new to the market, so to speak. Uh, sales were almost completely made in China, but the end, uh, they, I mentioned this, they, they did move into Norway. Okay, another key di distinguishing factor uh, is tech, at, at their technical advantages compared to his peers. Again, we've mentioned this. Um, uh, again, it's similar to Tesla, things of that nature. So we've already mentioned that they've made significant investments in R&D. And right here are the numbers. Look at this. Uh, with They invested $317 million in R&D in 2019 and $265 million in 2020, representing 89 and 29 of annual revenues, respectively. That is a massive number uh, relative to their uh, to their revenues, things of that nature, and more, as far as publicly disclosed, more than Neo, Lee, and some of the other guys out there, okay? 
So it's just talking about the growth prospects of the overall kind of EV market. Uh, sales of EVs amounted to 3.2 million units in 2022. This was in uh, China. No, 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 I apologize. Uh, an increase of almost 50% from the previous year with China and, with, with China and Europe being the regions that were represented. Oh yeah, that, that is China and, and, and uh, Europe. So 3.2 million units sold. The market share of EVs is still quite low at only 4.4% of global car sales. But here's where it gets, it gets interesting. It was only 2.5 in 2019. So you can see that it um, it went up a little under 2% in from 2019 to 2020. There's other videos where I've done is talk about a major adoption rates that uh, are pretty impressive. In fact, in China, they want um, 20% of their goal. They're, they're forecasting that 20% of all cars sold. So out of 100 cars, 20 of them will be EV by 2025. Um, by the way, the United States is, is looking at a number where about 10% of all cars sold uh, by 2025 will be EV cars, okay? And that will continue to go up. Um, basically, global sales projections, uh, basically saying that, that it's going to grow at about 30%. Uh, that's the overall EV market's going to grow at 30% globally. Um, but look at China. Uh, in China, market share of about 6.3% compared to market share of just 44 So that means that in China right now, for every every 100 cars sold, it's actually 6.3 of them are, um, are EV cars. So that's in China. So that's interesting to note. Okay, and uh, with only 20, 27,000 cars delivered in 2020, Xpeng is clearly a very small player in the China market with market share of only 2%. That means they have a tremendous amount of room to grow, okay? Okay, assuming, assuming a stable market share of 2% over the next few years, Xpeng could sell around 140,000 cars by 2025, but given the company's technolo technological, technological leadership and more diverse product lineup in coming years, its market share is likely to increase to a level between 4 and 5% by 2025, okay? So that means that Xpeng can increase its deliveries to about 300,000 units per year in the next three to four years, boosting exponentially its revenues during this time frame. Good stuff. Indeed, according to analyst estimates, Xpeng's revenues are expected to grow at 85% annually over the next four years to nearly $9.7 by 2024. There you go. All right, let's take a look at tip ranks. Uh, tip ranks and I differ a little bit. I think this is about a $60 stock inside of a year, uh, which is very similar to NEO. Um, you know, there are uh, tip ranks and there is six analysts rating it, uh, saying it's a 48.68 inside of a year. That represents a 52% gain off of the current um, price that we're at right now. And that's a year out from here, okay? So again, hey, if I'm wrong, they're wrong. Cut our numbers in half. Look at it as a 30% upside investment. Good go, you know, thing like that. Set your, set your you know, Here's, here's one thing. A lot of times, guys, what I'll do when I'm when I'm get, getting into stocks, I'll set my exit price. I'll just say, hey, I want to be in it and I want to make 30% or 40% or whatever it is. And I'll set that exit price and I'll know going in what that exit price is. And when it hits that, it triggers it, I'll sell. So just as an FYI, okay? Uh, you can see this is the analysts that are covering it. You can see uh, overall what they're, you know, what they're rating. If you want to pause the video, you're more than welcome to kind of look and kind of see. I'm not going to delve too deeply into this. I view the analyst as a data point. I don't, I don't put, you know, all my all my eggs in that proverbial basket, but I use it as just a data point, just as a, okay, hmm, interesting, we agree, we disagree, or whatever it may be. Okay, so let's wrap up with a few final thoughts. Yeah, so overall, you know that I'm very, very bullish on these guys. Uh, I've pretty much said what I wanna say in this video. If you got value out of this video, then I would love for you to do two things. Number one, if you haven't done so, subscribe, become part of my community, and number two, drop a like if you got video, if you got, if you got video, if you got value out of this video. I do that almost every time. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Uh, drop in the comments below if you need anything, and I'll see you later.